ChatGPT is the fastest adopted technology in the history of human time. The next fastest thing was TikTok, which took nine months to get 100 million users or you know signups. Instagram took two and a half years to get to, to that number. ChatGPT did it in one month. Does that not just make it a different version of Google? Because Google just doesn't, because I'm thinking that becomes an advertising tool and that's what Google was built oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that's, I think, one of the biggest. So, so, so the, the thing isn't, it's a Google killer because it's going to answer questions for you. It's competing against Google in a way that it's actually going to lead people to purchasing decisions. All right. Good afternoon, Renee. Welcome back to How Would You Build It? How are you doing? Yeah, great, Bobby. Good to be back. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep to our buzzwords. We seem to love the buzzwords, right? So this week it's all about AI again. We just can't seem to stay away from the conversation. Yeah, look, there's a there's obviously a lot happening and it's moving fast. So you know, even if we spoke about it a few weeks ago, there's so much that has happened in the meantime mm -hmm. uh, that it's probably worth a visit and say, okay, but what does this mean? And also in conversations that I have everywhere I go, I'm at a Brian. People go. What does this mean for my job? Like, what am I, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah. So, you know, it's popping up everywhere. And um, yeah, it's definitely very topical. No, yeah, exactly. But you you took the words out of my mouth, right? Uh, I wanted to say, I've already told you that within the first three months of the year, we've already, we've been introduced to a thing called ChatGPT3. And already we've been introduced to a thing called ChatGPT4. So like mm. this thing is moving fast. Um, another big thing that need, people need to understand is that, ChatGPT is the fastest adopted technology in the history of human time. The next fastest thing was TikTok, which took nine months to get 100 million users or you know, signups. Instagram took two and a half years to get to, to that number. ChatGPT did it in one month to get to that's 100. Crazy. It's crazy. And that's just to prove the, the adoption and this pace of what this is doing. And like you said, it's like just having this white collar worker sitting next to you, helping you with everything you do. I mean, how do you not pay attention? Uh, well, and it's also insane, just from a product perspective, you think about it, if you have 100 million signups, right? If you can, if you can convert 5% of those into $20 subscriptions, mm. I mean, that's an enormous amount of money. So obviously, yeah. they invested a ton to get to this point. But I, mm -hmm. I you know, it's just looking bright for this technology. And, you know, Bobby, what's really scary for me is the fact that I look at a company like Microsoft and it's almost as if every week they're introducing something which just looks like it can be a startup killer if it's mm -hmm. backed by this power of of, of, of ChatGPT, right? So, I mean, they, they're building a tool that is kind of playing in Canva space, putting pressure on Canva to launch their AI tool. They just, just did a release this week. Uh, I mean, we know what they're doing with Teams, which is putting an immense amount of pressure on Slack. Like Slack's going cool. What are we doing AI wise? Um, you know, all of the other products in the Microsoft suite, you know, even Notion's probably going, geez, how are we going to compete with a Microsoft product that's so well integrated in everything that you do business? They're already plugged in, eh? Um, I've used yeah, AI, I've used in. Notions. Yeah. Um, but but now, you know, on, on Microsoft side, they also bring it through their products. So, you know, the, the Microsoft Word and Excel is getting co-pilot soon where, you know, you'll have the power of ChatGPT integrated into Excel. You're like, you can give it a table of data and go, tell me what's going on here. So, you know, and it really is like a white collar worker that's sitting next to you, which is fascinating because for years we've been looking at uh, automation and AI and we've been worried about, you know, the blue collar workers. Like, you know, they're yeah. all going to lose their job. I tell you, there's something that ChatGPT won't be doing, and that's putting a seed in the ground to plant some vegetables. Like, that ain't going to happen. So, <laughs> it cannot. Not yet, anyways. So, yeah. So, yesterday, I was thinking about the irony. Like, you know, we, we're almost going back to, you know, some of humans doing the important things, caring for others, making food. And, you know, it, it, it does offer us that opportunity to go back to the roots of, you know, how communities were formed years ago. Yeah. Uh, because some of these other things can now be automated. And um, something that's also fascinating is I saw in a, in our newsletter, I think two weeks ago, we covered a story of a, um, uh, a in China, they actually made AI the CEO of a company and it's outperforming the, all the oh, other really share yeah. in Hong Kong by 18%. Like it, it gets all the data and it makes decisions. 24 hours a day, it works seven days a week and it gets zero pay. It never <laughs> complains. Uh, now that is scary. Now, 
there's so many people that are saying, uh, you know, is my job in danger here? And I just heard that and now I'm nervous, right? That, that now for the first time makes me get nervous. Like that means somebody is actually going to do it. But I've I've definitely been moving towards that same sentiment of what you just said, which is that human element. I almost feel like if you're going to be doing business, it's about how do you leverage the information, like the de- like the outputs that, that AI is going to give you and how do you yeah. leverage that from a human perspective? Because like you said, at the end of the day, we need to put something in the ground to grow. We need to, you know, get water into our taps. We still need to do all of these other things. That's, that's not going to go away. So it's a matter of how do we use it to improve our productivity? And I think that's the main thing. Um, what sparked us doing this episode today was uh, the article you shared with me from Bill Gates, who kind of went on and categorize some of the biggest areas he saw AI kind of influencing. And that's that's where we're going to go with this. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, just interestingly, like Bill Gates, um, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about him. Mm-hmm. But, um, he put chips know, in this us. Guy's, <laughs> this guy's been around for a long time and he's seen a lot of things. And, and very interestingly, he said there were the two times in his life when he was most excited about tech was when he saw a graphical user interface. So yes. those of you old enough that would remember, we had Microsoft DOS which was a text-based uh, operating command. system, a uh, command-based operating system. And, you know, the evolution of that was the first version of Windows. And, um, you know, that was, he said he got quite excited. Uh, and uh, the second time he got excited was when last year, or I think the year before, the, the um, OpenAI team showed him what they're busy working on, which is, you know, chat GPT. And then he got really excited. And he says the fundamental difference between this time and that time, and that's probably one of the main reasons why we're moving so fast is, at that time, you know, you could fit everybody interested in computer and computer software like into a small classroom. Mm. You know, there were handful of people, like 30 people in America that were actually interested about this. Mm. But now, you know, the the amount of people that are interested in AI and the application of it and, and so many, you know, just people working in tech that, are, mm. that have an interest and want to use it, which is also, you know, partly the reason why there's so many people that have signed up for this. You know, there's so many people building stuff on this. So mm. it's just going to mm. move way faster. Uh, and and uh, you know the most important thing is people need to understand what it is, how to use it, and mm-hmm. and how they can actually use it practically to make their work better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I say the the number hundred million users in a month. Great. There's still six point nine billion people that need to figure out what this thing is, right? So we still got a long yeah. way to go. I mean, I spoke about being at the Cape Epic event yesterday, and I walked around there and I was wondering how many people have been exposed to this in that area. I mean, it was quite full. A lot of people, very white collar you know, people with money, you know, all of that. Um, and I thought to myself, how many of them are exposed to it to understand it? How do how many people mm-hmm. understand what it can do? And I think a nice way that we can go about it is if we literally take Bill Gates's article as a kind of framework for our conversation today, we can look into the different areas that um, that a person can kind of create a startup, build, uh, you know, how would you build it, right? And I think the yep. most obvious one is productivity. And I think we kind of already touching on it. But a, a use case that I heard of recently or not that long ago was um, like, think about all the, especially if you use Teams already, right? You can get your meeting, you can record it. It'll transcribe all the, the words for you. Now, imagine yep. you could put that into an AI and say, can you take this bullet pointed, create my minutes for me, Create the tasks that I need to do in X, Y, and Z. And, and and you can like increase your productivity by how much. Now, there's a massive yeah. opportunity. There, and I know that people are trying to solve this already, right? So productivity goes, shoots through the roof for everyone. You spoke about a CEO. I mean, Notion. I mean, what, what other kind of use cases do you see in sort of the productivity space? Yeah, I, well, I think firstly, if, if one takes a step back, I think what OpenAI did amazingly well is, you know, they, they've got this API available, right? So there's mm. so there's two parts to this conversation. The one is the development of AI, and, you know, the basically the, the development of these frameworks or tools that, that one can use. And in different industries, people are doing different things, right? But these guys built like this, this model that, you know, is accessible via API. So... A lot of people are looking at it going, well, I can actually start an AI startup without doing any of the AI. And I remember there was a meme of saying AI startups, you know, is actually just a a, a startup that has an API connection into ChatGPT. Um, and, and that's cool, right? Because And I think a lot of people are going to use this. And I think you'll see these startups pop up everywhere in the future, right? Mm. But in terms of time saving, I mean, as an example, one can take this entire podcast, put the transcript in it and go give us a summary which you can use on exactly. social media to promote us, right? Yeah. So, you know, something something that of 
sometimes didn't even get done because it was just too much work to do can now quickly within five seconds get done mm. so, so those are some of the basic things but w- one thing that's really important which i think already leads to a lot of startup ideas is you have to ask questions well right you have to mm. contextualize now mm. uh, i almost um you know almost went off linkedin because there's so many people going you've been using chat gpt wrong here's 10 steps on how you do it <laughs> like i've totally stopped reading those don't go into twitter then you're just gonna get even more <laughs> upset <laughs> so, so and i and i don't think that's necessarily the answer and i think a lot of these people mean well but the, but the actual thing is like if you're a subject matter expert you'll know how to contextualize something mm-hmm. and explain it in order to get this white collar worker to actually add more value to that, which you're already doing and speed up certain things. Mm. Right. What I do think is like, if you're not a subject matter expert, it will not get you to an expert level. It will, it will do some basic things, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it'll ever, ever, you know, provide that extra, extra, but that's really going to add value to something or something that you're doing. Mm. Now that's where I think already a business opportunity opens up because a lot of people that are, experts at the moment let's say someone's a really good content writer right no worry they go well look at how well this thing writes like what am i going to do everybody's just going to use that no everybody is going to use that to write average and slightly above average content right the only thing that's going to happen is as a writer you're probably going to upskill and go well now i need to take it to the next level and because you are able to write on that new level because you have something else to offer you will probably be able to increase your rates substantially because there will be fewer and fewer experts that really know how certain things work. Mm. And those people in time will be able to charge more. Mm. Now, another case in point, if you think about it, like AI has been using whatever's on the internet to learn, right? Stack Overflow, I feel for those guys. Like, I Big mean, time. all of their content have been used to train this thing to code. Yeah. And and I don't know if you, if you have access to GPT-4, just ask it to help you to write an iPhone app. It's insane. Like literally today I tried it and within 10 minutes, I could run in the simulator and Xcode. That's a, scary. A, a, a Just a side so note, like, you know that process bought Stack Overflow about two years ago. I know, yeah. They did not look <laughs> into the future, eh? Shame. Oh, maybe they've got something coming. But the reality is a lot of people contributed this data, right? And AI yeah. learned from that. Now, if something like Stack Overflow were to go under now, right? What What is the GPT-5 going to learn from? If, if, mm. if the future is humans learning from computers and not humans learning from humans and sharing the knowledge, mm. what, it is, what is it going to learn from, right? Mm, mm. So, so the case being that in time, these experts that have, you know, our age, people that are working in the, the, you know, the, the workplace at the moment, five, ten, five to 10 years from now, when this AI stuff has been adopted everywhere and we've got this new workforce coming in, they can only learn whatever GPT has learned up until then. They they, yeah. they, they wouldn't necessarily have the deep know-how. Mm. And then mm. you'll find people that are becoming experts and their rates have just tripled in two years. Yeah. Because they go, well, I can tell you stuff the GPT can't tell you. Mm. Because, mm. you know, I've seen a few things. I've experienced mm. a few stuff. So, so my relation to the said topic isn't based on connecting just informational dots um, and a little bit of comprehension. It's actually a deep-rooted understanding Mm. Uh, of, of how something works so i think experts are really really in for a good time in the future you know mm. when ai really get, gets adopted i think you know subject matter experts have a massive opportunity mm. and then you're know, coming back to startups i think there's a lot of cool opportunity and plugging in this into whatever you're building existing you know is whatever products you have at the moment mm. uh, but also um you know you don't have to build those AI models. You can just put it in. Thinking mm. about something like HubSpot or Pipedrive, like sales CRM tools, right? I mean, th- they can just plug it in and go, well, analyze my pipeline and tell me like where I'm making mistakes. Mm. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. Then it goes, looks like these kind of customers, you're doing better. Like these kind of emails work better. It's like, cool, wow, great, yeah. great insight. Oh, now yeah. it's a way better product. And you didn't do much other than plugging in the API and understanding how to ask the right questions in order to get useful. Outputs. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's so many use cases. I think chat GPT is the first interface that we've been exposed to. You ask it a question, it spurts out the answers for you, whatever it is, or it gives you the data. It gives you the, the, the code in, in, in some of the examples, but what about travel, right? I want to go on a holiday with my wife to Europe, let's say. And it says, these are the top 10 destinations of it. And now you build in a link, into chat gpt or you take the data that comes from it and you just talk to it and you say okay from here 
Can you actually book the hotel for me? Can you book me yep. at that that hotel spot or uh, that uh, adventure tour that we're going to do? So now you're just building the interface that takes that date and says, thank you very much for it. Now I'm going to plug into web two, let's call it, and say, yep. now make the booking for me and pay for it. Done. Yep. Hey? I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a startup idea right there, right? Exactly. And, and you know, what makes it even more scary is, Remember these, uh, chat GPT has, uh, can remember, con uh, understands context to a certain degree and it can remember previous things you said, right? So mm. if, if you get a user to sign up to your platform as a tourism platform and uh, you have some context around how old they are, who's traveling with exactly. them, what, what, what chips they've enjoyed, et cetera, you pass that into this uh, via API as context and then go, cool, give me five things to do mm. that's in line with Cape Town, right? So, so now all of a sudden you have this customized experience and it, there's no human interaction here. It's like just yeah. all automated. Yeah. Uh, and so it's all about just connecting endpoints and, and, you know, making a good experience. And there's a lot of other similar applications. I think in the medical space, um, we'll see, you know, initial pre-diagnosis, which has to follow a specific path until you can mm. actually see a doctor. A mm. lot of that can happen online, right? Yeah. Because in the past, they couldn't have done this. In the past, they could ask you five general questions, but the reality is whatever you answer needs to, it takes the doctor or the GP on the next chain of, okay, mm. well, then maybe it's, it's a process of elimination. So we start with, exactly. what's your symptom? Yeah. Right, cool, I've got a headache. Okay, and then there's some typical follow-up questions, but whatever you ask leads to whatever the next question is. Mm -hmm. That's not something you can do with a, even a clever form. You need some form of artificial intelligence to understand, yeah. well, what, what should I be asking next? Yeah, uh, I've tried this. It works unbelievably well. Like it, yeah. it's really good at leading you on a journey of understanding, you know, what's going on. Which is exactly what Bill Gates touched on in that, in that article. He's talking about, you know, you know, being a philanthropist, he, you know, tries to help, you know, the poorer countries, whether it's Africa or South America, wherever it is. And he says now with an internet connection and uh, access to an API tool like ChatGPT, you can now get um, health advice, doctorly advice in a rural area where doctors are probably very hard to find. Now all yeah. of a sudden you can get those initial things and just understand what you should do in that initial phases of I've got a problem, what can I do? And that's also phenomenal, like how it's going to spread and, and, and into those kind of spaces, you know? Yeah, and look, and you mentioned this in the article, but like in most poor countries like a lot of the things uh that lead to you know serious health issues or even death can be prevented with some very basic means and very basic understanding of how certain things need to be treated right mm -hmm. and, and those are definitely things that AI can handle and you know some of the ethical issues around this is like what if it makes a mistake like who's responsible that's stuff we're gonna have to figure out in time yes but the reality is you're looking at no doctor versus yeah Exactly. Some answer. So, so I think there is a there is an upside to that. It's definitely something to explore. Definitely a space I think it can have a massive impact mm. in healthcare. Mm. Um, and and in diagnosis, just getting to an answer quicker. Like yeah. a lot of times, getting to an answer quick is is mm. the difference between something severe or something that's easily treatable. Yeah. So yeah. I think there's a role that AI can play in that space. That's for sure. Okay, so the next one, finance. Uh, I was telling you just before pressing record, uh, Michael Yudan, the old, uh, he doesn't like being called it, but the old CEO of F FNB, now of Bank Zero. And he's just saying that you need to. In, in the finance world, there's a lot of opportunities there. I know in trading, they've got bots already that kind of read you know, all the indicators and, and do trades for people. But what if we took that away from just trading and said, listen, I am 20 years old or I'm 25. I've got my first job. What should I do with my first salary? Like, what should I pay for it? What should I do next? You know, and you kind of help this person go along. Um, I mean, I love all the financial advisors out there, but, you know, if you can save yourself one or 1.5% 1 of your of your portfolio in the long run, you, you, you're you a hell of a lot richer um, by just using an, an AI tool for finance. I mean, that's one okay. example. Yeah, look, I, I, I think one of the funny things when it comes to that is, um, uh, you know, when when a fund is too, uh, when a fund gets too big, it runs the risk of actually, you know, starting to trade against itself and the strategies don't work. I mean, this is a, a thing in traditional finance and it's mm -hmm. the same with AI. Like if AI gives everyone the same advice, yeah, then to the moon. if you know what advice they're giving, then you can start trading against it and actually make way, way more and they end up losing. So. So, you know, it's very, it will be very interesting to see how that plays out over time. Mm -hmm. uh, but something that I found really interesting, there's a, there's a guy on Twitter and I forgot his name. And, uh, but if you search for the hashtag hustle GPT, 
Um, this guy literally gave Chat GPT four a hundred dollars and told him I want to grow to a hundred thousand uh, and no manual labor and I'll do whatever you tell me to do every day, right? And um, he's been sharing this journey. I think he's in week two now, but it's fascinating. Like he, you know, the guy he gave him advice on what he should do, and and then every day the guy would relay back. This is what happened. This is how much money we've made. This is where we're at. Um, to to and, Chat GPT four. Yeah, so he feeds back all the info of the stuff he does in real life. Uh, and then Chad GPT makes decisions. So there was even a guy who volunteered, or not volunteered, he said he'll he'll do some of the work of the, uh, I think it was a web design work on risk. So uh, for equity. So he goes back to Chad GPT and he says, this guy wants to do it for equity. And he goes, yeah, that's maybe a good idea. So the guy replies to Chad GPT like, well, how much should I offer him? He goes, no, offer him 5%. Or 2% or something. And then he comes back and he says, no, the guy wanted more. And then he kind of developed an argument, say how much the guy should get. So it's, it's fascinating to see just how this thing is operating as a as an entrepreneur or founder, like telling someone how to build a business. Amazing. So, um, so I'm, I'm keen amazing. to do a similar challenge. Like if I start with a thousand rand in South Africa and go, cool, let's hustle. Yeah. Um, but you know, in, in terms of personal finance, you know, an experiment I would also love to try is going, well, how about I give it my bank statements for the last three months and go, you know, ask me questions on the bank statement. And then I assign transactions to certain things. And then I tell it, help me budget. Yeah, we go. Like, you know, this exactly. is, here's my daily balance. You can even probably maybe even do it by API, mm -hmm. just update your balance daily and keep track of it. And the yeah. guy this guy go whatever the ai is i don't mm. know if it's male or female it gives you <laughs> they feedback on, <laughs> they they give you feedback on um how to manage your finances better i think that's pretty cool yeah there we go finance um another industry i thought of law and i've heard that people have literally gone into meetings and before they've got into the meeting they've asked chat gpt3 advice on the scenario or this piece of legislation or whatever it is and asked him for advice, all of a sudden they sounded like a subject matter expert in this meeting, yet they just asked AI five minutes ago what to do. Listen, that stuff is scary. Like I, whenever someone sends me an NDA, I actually populate the NDA in there and I go, is there anything in there I should be worried about? And and it actually highlights some very interesting things. Like the mm -hmm. other day I did the NDA and then it was talking about how the definition of what it is we're going to be discussing is way too broad and how that can get me into trouble in certain situations. And, wow. you know, I'm like, as a layman on, on, on these topics, like reading through it, I'm like, I would never pick that up. Like, for me, it just looks like whatever we're going to talk about. So, so you know, it's, it's, I think also, you know, another very practical thing is the end user license agreements. We all just accept whenever we use software, you know, build a little tool that you pop that in there and it tells you what you're actually signing up for. Because who reads, who reads those 500 pages? I mean, no. you just scroll to the bottom and go accept, no. right? Yeah, take my data. Now, if you can pop it in AI and go, well, what should I be concerned about? I think mm -hmm. we will see some very scary and interesting things. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that a lot. Oof. So we've touched on productivity. We've touched on finance, uh, health, education, law. One more is agriculture. I think we've already touched yeah. on that as well. Um, there was, was What was the use case you said about agriculture besides planting? No, a I think... No, I think agriculture has massive opportunity. You know, one of the biggest challenges for, you know, in Africa in terms of agriculture, we've got a lot of big farmers, but we also have a lot of small farmers and we could have substantially more small farmers mm. uh, if we actually help them to, to be more successful. So, you know, farming is a very interesting space, you know, and a lot of times for the small guys, it's a it's a 100% or a 0% game. Like either your mm. crops get taken out and you lose a crap load of money and you lose your livelihood. Or, you know, you cash out and you make a lot of money. Now, if you're inexperienced or you don't, don't have anyone who can help you with this as a new farmer, obviously your your chances of ending up in the zero category is is much higher. Um, and, and I'm talking about extremes. You know, there are cases mm -hmm. where hail would take out 40% of it or, you know, um, you know, some pest would take out a large part of it. But, but you know, the, the reality of it is like a lot of small farmers fail because of... Um, Mm. You know, circumstances are not really understanding how to deal with certain things. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can help these people at scale to, you know, be able to ask questions and get really good advice, um, you know, I, I, I think it has a, the opportunity to actually have a massive impact on small scale farmers. And as mm -hmm. a practical example, I mean, I saw someone who built an ocean board 
and they integrate the chat GPT to it. Uh, and then they basically put in a notion board, like what kind of vegetables I want to grow in a homegrown garden. And in a table, it actually started building a watering schedule, a reminder for watering, you know, all kinds of things just built into it, uh, just based on understanding what to do. So I'm like, wow, that's 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 almost an app by itself, right? Someone can, how, how would you build it? That's what we're talking about. Like, how would you build yeah, a startup? That was where I was trying to move the conversation garden. towards. You've just done it already. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, there's a startup idea for you right there. You can literally tomorrow, but probably in a week from now, build a startup that builds notion boards to help people do homegrown gardens and monitor when to do what and, and how to do it. And and you can probably charge people a small fee per month to use it. So so there's a lot of these things that are popping up going, well, you know, stuff that wasn't available, information that was really hard to to go through. Like if you were to Google how to run a homegrown garden, she's like, mm. that's one of the most complex yeah, I've tried that and given up because I'm like, yeah. it depends on where you are. You know, there's so many variables, moving parts, but AI can handle those moving parts. Yeah. Uh, and I believe at least in time, handle them really well. So we'll see more small scale farmers. We see, see more people doing homegrown vegetable gardens. Um, you know, if you think about all kinds of other data, you know, if you can do crop yield sizes uh, together with weather data, it can actually advise you on doing some interesting things in the future. So, mm. yeah, so exciting stuff for agriculture, that's for sure. Yeah, I think I think the, what's, what I'm really trying to fathom now, now, so I used the travel one, and that was quite an easy one to kind of plot out, right? Because it's quite an easy kind of journey. Um, but my question that I, I'm kind of wondering is, you just told us that Notion kind of just plugs in and it does it for you. It creates the graphs and stuff like that. So what is it that one would build um, that would plug into what ChatGPT can already do? Like why why would you build something yeah, around so, so this, this is, ChatGPT this, is already doing it for you, telling you what to do? Yeah, so so the Notion example isn't actually using Notion AI. What, what they did is, you know, they're inserting API calls mm. from ChatGPT and prompts. Yeah. So, so the build part is really having someone technical that will be able to you know, prompt the API and then get the data back from the API and present it in, in a notion board or HTML page for that matter, mm. uh, in a very practical way. And and mm. that is so the product build side. It's more know, the has, interface. It's been simplified to come up with the idea and build an interface. Mm. Right. So it's about the so interface. It's it's about the interface and about spotting the opportunities. Now, you know, there's there's um uh, a, a local guy, uh, Shai, who I've been working with for some time, and he, he eventually sold his startup data to to Yoko and and a few years ago, uh, and he's working on a concept now um, that is actually uh, you know getting people to pre-screen specifically developers, right? Uh, but soft skills, so not not sending them developer tasks, pretending that they are part of a team, mm -hmm. uh, getting ChatGPT to play the function of a team member and ask it questions and see how the person responds to assess whether or not it's culture fit. So, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that because is cool. It, it, it's, it's, and it's not something you can really fake, right? I mean, you can oh. ask Chad GPT to write an answer for you, but if you're not a culture fit, it's Chad GPT yeah. won't know what culture is anyway. So, um, you know, I thought that was quite a unique novel thing as well, where it can actually help you find culture fits at scale. Like a lot of these people don't see, um, you know, don't see all of the people that could be good fits because looking at the CV, they see, oh, this person has a qualification that doesn't fit the, fit, fit the skill. But mm. if they were to know that this person is actually a good culture fit mm. and the way they think and talk and treat teammates mm. is actually exactly what we're looking for, they mm. might actually consider hiring him. Mm. So, so Charles put this thing together. It's called greatfit.ai if you want to go check it out. Uh, very early stages he's taking up some people for a pilot but i think it's a pretty novel idea it's a pretty cool mm. way using uh ai to do hr at scale yeah no exactly so so i saw that you shared that with me and um i think he said he was gonna plug into like github's kind of the comments so let's take reddit right people have been filling yeah. up reddit with their personality for a long time how they answer it so not only just the information but how they answer it so the same concept yeah. right so it's now it's like saying, here's the data from this person. Break down yeah. what they've been saying it, how they say it, how they kind of, you know, um, handle tough questions or yeah, are criticism. They belittling people? Yeah, are they laughing at people and making mistakes? Or what is the tone mm. when they, they answer a, a simple question? 
So so a lot of that together with a conversation that the chatbot has with you, then you then you then you I think you can get a pretty good idea of what kind of person you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Pretty scary, right? Because they can actually dig in everything we've done. They can listen to all our podcasts, Bobby, and then go, Well, this is the kind of person that Bobby and Renee is. And, yeah. Uh, Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come join us. Yeah, so it's interesting. So so now you kick. So I like the fact that we've kind of honed it into to the to the interface. And it's gonna come down to kind of how do you present this to the people, right? Now we've got this new tool. Yeah. ChatGPT is the first interface that we've been exposed to really that really works and we can understand it. So it's gonna be about that interface. Do business models change or do we just kind of use this new data point to continue with the same kind of business models we have? Well, that's a very interesting question, right? Because if we look at the same models, we can go, cool, we can continue in a SaaS model, right? So let's yep. let's say I built this little startup um, of um, helping people build, grow homegrown gardens using like AI as an interface. So it's kind of, <coughs> kind of conversational and guides them along the journey, sends mm. them reminders. It's pretty cool, right? So traditionally, you would expect like something like that. I'll go, cool, I'll help you gardens 200 rand a month, right? Mm. Mm. But the barrier to entry is so freaking low that someone else can go build one and charge 50 rand a month, right? So... <laughs> How do I now value add mm. on something that's very easy to build in order to justify my sales spend, right? Yeah. It's, 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 that's where it becomes complicated. So I'm thinking, yes, the models change. I would rather go, the end game here is selling uh, products that you would use gardening, right? So it's an e-commerce store. Oof. But, Oof. The, but, the, like but the on-ramp into getting people to use my e-commerce store is a conversational AI bot that actually helps you build a homegrown garden, Right. Now, so so now it becomes really interesting, right? Because I'm not competing on the quality of my of my prompts and my interface and my bots. I'm actually, you know, I'm making sure that's great yeah. as a funnel into selling something else. Mm. So, mm. so I think that's kind of how traditional businesses need to look at it as well. Like, mm. like I think e-commerce is going to change for good. Like I hope yeah. take a lot of because mm. I mean the the way the way we'll lead people into buying certain things is definitely going to change because we now have someone or something that can at scale contextually understand where people are and what they probably need. Mm. But Renier, if ChatGPT is looking only from 2021 backwards, what do we, how, how, how often is it being updated? So what if there's like a new, uh, like GreatFit, right? Like how would, okay, maybe GreatFit's not the right one, but like a new startup, a new e-commerce store that's still trying to figure out its brand. It's, yeah. it's still making its name for itself. Chat, ChatGPT doesn't know about it yet. So what happens to those people? Yeah. So, so I think, you know, it's important to, to distinguish, you know, chat GPT is not connected to the internet right now. Mm-hmm. I, I said it's going to happen soon. Um, you know, a true test remains on how it would operate when it's actually connected to the internet. You mm-hmm. know, I have, a, I have a feeling that they wouldn't necessarily allow it to train live, at least for a start, using internet data. Because you know it could be exposed to some kind of information, but that's what Google Bard did and bombed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it gets gets bombed with a lot of false information, which it believes is true. Mm. You know, and then it just talks a lot of nonsense. We all know ChatGPT actually does talk a bunch of nonsense, like because it 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 struggles to understand whether or not it should tell you a nice story or actually give you a fact. Like it Mm. it struggles to distinguish between the two. So be careful when you Mm. use it. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, it will be interesting to see how they plug it in, right? Yeah. So, so that's the first thing. The second thing is when a new e-commerce store launches, well, ChatGPT doesn't have to understand anything about that e-commerce store because what I'm going to ask, let's stick with my gardening example, what I will ask ChatGPT via API is just general questions about, uh, you know, I'm trying to grow tomatoes mm-hmm. in my garden. I live in mm-hmm. Southern in the Western Cape, South Africa. It's not working. This is a picture of what it looks like. What should I be doing? So it's going to say you need a pesticide with this and this and this, right? Mm. And, and I'll link that back to your e-commerce product. You're on the side, go buy this now, right? So so you use the answers of mm. ChatGPT to solve specific problems yeah. to link it with actual products and, and opportunities for the sale. And again, and the same about consulting and all kinds of other things, right? It's, it's mm. really... It's really going to become a mm. part of a lead funnel for every organization. Yeah. You know, as the lead form on my consulting website, right? So at the moment, I've got to watch your name or book a meeting with me, right? Mm. What if I build a workflow using ChatGPT to actually understand if this is a good match? Will I be able to help this person? 
<laughs> right? So, so I can ask a few questions. Yeah. And based on what the person that responds, go, um, you know, Renee will actually be able to help you with this, this, and this. Mm. And it's probably going to be five sessions at whatever rate. Uh, do you want to go for it? And then when the person signs up for it, I can already get the context of all the conversations that have been had with AI mm. up until that point where where I can go, cool, well, now I meet with the person, I already understand a lot about what they're doing, what's happening, and we don't waste time on the onboarding part. We can actually dive in and really make sure mm. not only is this a good fit between a consultant and a you know mm. someone seeking that service, but you know we also hit the road running because there's a lot of context that's already been provided. Yeah. So Super that's, by the way, a startup yeah. idea I just came up with. Built there like we a go. consultant platform. I guess, using, how would you build it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite interesting. I think just to summarize as we, we close off here, I think the the you know, if we just summarize everything we've spoken about, there's many different fields that one could go into. So you could specialize in sort of an industry, you know, so kind of we said agriculture, productivity, uh, law, and so forth. So it's it's about finding that industry that you kind of are passionate about, maybe. Then it's about focusing on that interface. It's like saying, okay, I'm going to plug in and I'm going to create an interface that's going to kind of, you know, plug it, like it's going to appeal to the people that are going to be using this. And then kind of creating some sort of an e-commerce business model where you can kind of link it across. So that's kind of what we're looking at. And I think it's quite an interesting way to sort of summarize, you know, people probably don't know. They just know this AI is things coming, but what, what do we do about yeah. it? Everyone's trying to do it. So I think that's quite a nice summary. What are your last takeaways? Yeah, I think like, a, you know, the, 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 the idea of a lead funnel into converting somewhere else, whether it be a product in e-commerce or consulting mm. service or, mm. you know, upsell or something or connecting with someone or that, that I think is really interesting. Uh, and I think the reason for that is, like I said, is because the barrier to entry for someone else to build a competing product is very low. Mm. Like you've got this API, you just pay the API fee and you connect and you, you can you can compete. So it's really going to change. Um, you know, I don't think you can compete necessarily on that. And I think a lot of people are building products that are trying to compete in that space mm. where I think that might be dangerous. I'd, I'd build it as a funnel for something else, convert mm. you know, mm. into a customer or, or make money in a different place. Uh, but does that not just I... make it a different version of Google? Because Google just doesn't, because I'm thinking that becomes an advertising tool and that's what Google was built. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that's, I think, one of the biggest. So 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 the, the thing isn't, it's a Google killer because it's going to answer questions for you. It's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's competing against Google in a way that it's actually going to lead people to purchasing decisions. Mm. Sure. I feel like we've only touched the service, but uh, we've always got many other episodes to to kind of dive deeper into into these subjects. And uh, clearly, AI is not going away because one of the big things, Rene, we haven't really said it. It's like they say that this is as big as the iPhone. You know, what did the iPhone do to the world? What did the internet do to the world? And they're saying AI is kind of doing the same. No one ever said that about crypto, unfortunately, but uh, maybe it's in there okay. somewhere. <laughs> But nonetheless, like that's how big this thing is. And I guess it, it deserves the airtime that we're giving it. So yeah, I guess stay yeah. tuned and we'll we'll dive more into this in the future. Absolutely. Cool. Well, for that, thanks very much. And I'll just chuck it in there. If you haven't yet subscribed, do that. Give us a like and a follow and a comment. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, <Rene>. <laughs> <Okay>. nice <laughs> Cool. One.